Direct-to-consumer genetic testing is a way for consumers to obtain a test directly from a company uh, without needing um, a healthcare professional to help them order the test or receive the results. Um, an example of a company that does this is 23andMe, um, but there are other companies out there as well. So what happened with the recent FDA decision is that they um, approached 23andMe and actually told them that they needed to stop marketing their test. Um, 23andMe provides a test known as the per Personal Genome Services, or PGS, test, which tests for 254 health conditions, um, including inherited disorders, um, complex disorders that have a uh, at least a partial genetic basis to them and pharmacogenetic tests. And the FDA decision came about because they uh, felt that 23andMe was not providing them with enough evidence to support the analytical or clinical validity of their test. So what 23andMe has done in response is that they've still been offering their test, but they are at this point only offering uh, or only providing the genetic data back to the patient and they're not providing any type of um, information or um, calculation of health risk or interpretation of the data. That's up to the consumer to, um, to do that on their own. There are concerns about the PGS test. Um, so while the PGS test does have some very valid uses for it, for example, there are some great aspects of the test um, in terms of its inherited, some of its inherited disorders pieces that apply to very specific populations, and some of its pharmacogenetic tests. The majority or a large part of the test um, doesn't have a lot of clinical usefulness to it. The PGS test has um, offers testing for numerous inherited disorders, and. One of the tests, for example, tests for hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. So it looks for variants, uh, pathogenic variants in two genes, BRCA1 and BRCA2. For this disorder, there have been thousands of variants reported in these two genes, but the PGS test only looks for three specific variants that are very common in, uh, that are common in the Ashkenazi Jewish, Jewish population, but are not very common in other populations. So the potential risk there is that a non-Ashkenazi Jewish individual could receive their test results and not be aware of its limitations and think that their risk for hereditary breast or ovarian cancer is very low, when in fact the test itself has not even begun to address the risk in that patient. Another big concern with their test is they test for uh, many um, complex disorders like atrial fibrillation that have at least a partial genetic component to them. And this is not true just for 23andMe, but also many other direct-to-consumer testing companies. It's, it's actually very difficult to define the specific um, genetics of these complex disorders. So the DTC companies are not very standardized in how they offer these tests. So while one DTC company may look for variants in these five genes associated with atrial fibrillation, another DTC company may look for variants in three of the same genes and then two completely different ones. So that part is not well standardized. Another aspect of this that's not well standardized is that these companies will provide a risk score back to the patient or back to the consumer that tells them their absolute risk for getting one of these disorders. And unfortunately, the algorithms that they use to calculate these risk scores are also not standardized between the different companies. And so they take into account different variables. Some of them might um, give weight to a variant that has a higher odds ratio, whereas another company might not give any weight to any of the, the uh, genetic markers. And then taking that into account, plus all of the uh, differences in the genetic markers that they're actually looking at, results in different um, risk scores between the different companies for the same condition. And so this is a problem too. Advocates for this type of testing have actually pointed to studies that have shown that consumers who undergo 
um, direct-to-consumer genetic testing, when they receive the results back, for the most part, they do not act on the results. They don't change their lifestyle. They don't change their medication. Another concern is that uh, studies have also shown that the majority of healthcare providers, of primary care physicians, do not feel adequately prepared to interpret these results that come out. So if a consumer comes to their provider with a 100-page report from one of these direct-to-consumer genetic testing companies, the majority of primary care physicians actually feel overwhelmed by this, and they do not feel that they have received um, adequate education to be able to look through these reports and find out what is clinically actionable and what is not. So I think there should and there could and should be a place for these types of companies in the, the future of um, genetic testing. I think uh, for some aspects of the test, they really offer a great value to the consumer, both from the uh, perspective of cost to the consumer and um, enhancing their health care. And so I think that as long as these companies are very careful in their testing menu and what they choose to put on their, their test, um, that they look for tests that are only clinically actionable and provide meaning and value to the consumer, to the patient. Um, that's, that's really what we're looking for. I think that these direct-to-consumer genetic testing companies also need to be very transparent about the analytical and clinical validity of their tests, and they need to really state clearly the limitations of their test. And finally, I think that direct-to-consumer genetic testing companies need to work with one another, another to standardize their approach, both from the perspective of what genetic markers are they offering and also how they're, how they're um, calculating risk scores, you know, how is their algorithm exactly put together. And once these things are standardized, then it will provide a lot more value to these tests and a lot more meaning to them.